Radioactive decay problems are very common in Calc 1. Um, they're a nice, clean way to help students understand exponential decay. Um, so we're going to work through one here and just kind of point out some of the, the details specific to radioactive decay problems. All right, so the decay rate of a, a radioactive isotope is usually expressed in terms of something called a half-life. And so the reason we use the term half-life rather than some decimal is because, you know, radioactive isotopes decay so slowly. You know, if you said its decay rate is 0 0.00728, that doesn't really give you a, a good grasp of, like, how fast or slow that is. But the, the term half-life is a really good idea um, just to help us just kind of grasp the idea of how fast this thing is decaying. Here's what it means, um, half-life. Uh, it means if you bury a certain amount in the ground, the half-life is the amount of time it takes for that quantity, quantity to reduce uh, to half of its original size. It doesn't matter if you're burying 100 grams and it reduces to 50 or 10 grams and it reduces to 5. It, it doesn't matter. Um, the percentage of decay will be consistent no matter how much you actually bury in the ground. All right, so... Um, how does this relate to exponential growth? What's, what's the difference here? Well, with exponential growth, what you have is the rate and change of a quantity being proportional to that quantity, such as the rate of change in population is proportional to the size of the population. Well, it turns out it's the exact same model for decay, uh, with one small exception here. Um, if your quantity is decaying, if it's going down, then this uh, multiple here is going to be negative. So um, some textbooks will write the negative in uh, assuming that K is positive. Others will just keep the exact same model and just not worry about putting a negative, uh, assuming that K itself could be negative. But however you interpret it, just be aware for exponential decay problems, your growth rate, whether it be just the K or negative K, however you want to read it, uh, is going to be a negative quantity. All right, now that's good news for us because we already have the model for exponential growth for, for this um, type of differential equation. It's going to be P sub zero E to the negative KT. And so if you're uh, curious where this comes from, you can watch one of my earlier videos on exponential growth and we unpack how exponential functions are really the only types of functions whose derivatives look roughly like their originals. You know, because polynomials, rational functions, terms that have square roots, no other function does that other than exponential terms. That's what makes it a, a perfect function to satisfy this differential equation right here. All right, so now, what, what are some typical questions you'll be asked? Well, um, here's a very typical example. They'll give you an isotope, and I actually looked this up online right before I, I started this video here, and they will uh, say what the half-life of this radioactive isotope is, as I was discussing earlier. Radium-226 is a popular isotope who has a half-life of about 1,600 years. One of the resources I found said 1610. Another said um, uh, 1590, but we'll, we'll go with 1610 right here. And then a typical question would be, if that's his half-life, how much would be left X number of years down the road? And so they'll also sometimes give you a, a, how much they are initially burying in the ground. So I can go ahead and get the bulk of this model down the amount in the ground after t years will be 75 grams that's our initial quantity e to the negative kt now the problem here is i don't know what k is i don't know what the decay rate is but that's what the half-life hints at now can i take 1610 and sub it in for k no not exactly 1610 is uh, time that's in years that's not a decimal indicating growth rate, but in some roundabout way, it does seem to indicate growth rate, but we need to hash out those details. So here's what we can, can decipher from this. Um, if we plug in 1610 for time, you have 75 e to the negative k times 1610. So after 1610 years, um, on the left-hand side, we'll have half of the amount that we started with, namely 75 grams. So half of uh, 75 grams would be 37.5 grams, 
um, after 1600 years or so. And so if you notice in the equation that we currently have, the only unknown is k. And so we can solve for that k there and that'll be our growth rate. That'll be, um, or I guess technically our decay rate, how fast our, um, our radioactive isotope is decaying. So a little arithmetic here, solve for k, divide both sides by 75. Um, this will give you one half. That should be no surprise. It doesn't matter if it's 100 decaying to 50 or 50 decaying to 25 or whatever. When you divide that after the first step, you always get a half equals e to the negative 1610k. I just reordered those terms to look a little better. All right, next step is to get rid of the e. I'm on my way to solving for k. Now, um, hopefully re we recall that um, logarithmic functions are inverses of exponential functions. So specifically, the uh, inverse function of e, the, the guy who's going to get rid of e, is going to be the natural log function. So we'll apply natural log of both sides. Okay, um, the left hand side, that's actually a decimal that we can compute. Um, we'll take uh, natural log of uh, 0.5 and get negative 0.693, 142, uh, 1471806 if you wanted all of it. But um, I think for the left hand side, uh, negative 0 0.693 will suffice and then we'll cancel the natural log of e and have negative 1610 k perfect okay, last step is to solve for k here so we'll divide both sides by negative 1610 so we'll take this quantity divided by negative 1610 and this will give us our k value uh, notice that this guy is written in scientific notation, which means we have to move this decimal place left uh, four places because it's times 10 to the negative 4. And if that had been positive 4, we would have moved it right four places. So just a quick refresher on scientific notation there. But, um, but yeah, we'd have k equals 0. 0.00043. Um, 0526. 0526. Now notice how many decimal places I'm keeping here. Um, these exponential growth and decay problems are very, very sensitive as far as uh, where you round. If you had called this 0. 0.0004 and stopped there, it would have drastically changed your final predictions. And so um, it's good to keep lots and lots of decimals for these um, exponential growth rates here. All right, so I don't think I'm going to rewrite this just for time's sake, but um, back here in this step here, I basically had the exponential model finished except for the k. Well, I just found the k. This is the k that will be plugged in here. Don't forget to make it negative. There's that, that negative term in there as well. And so uh, if we go back up and look at the original question, the question was, how much will be left in 250 years? And so with this gener uh, generic model here, I just have to take out the time and plug in 250. And so I'll, I'll just basically just do all that on the calculator here and get the amount of radioactive material after 250 years. And we'll, we'll see what we get here. So we'll take uh, this quantity, we'll make it negative, make that quantity negative. All right, and then we'll multiply that times 250. And then we will take E raised to that amount. And then we'll multiply that quantity times the 75 grams that we started with. So in effect, I just plugged in 250 into my, my exponential decay model here. And, uh, and as I would uh, anticipate, is uh, just a little less than 75. 250 years is not a very long time compared to 1600 years, like the half-life. So after 250 years, probably not a whole lot has decayed. And in fact, um, yeah, it's only um, decayed just a few grams. We still have 67.35 grams, whereabouts, 67.35 grams. Uh, remaining. So um, anyway, this is a very, very typical problem with half-life problems. Uh, now you can probably adapt this idea 
to other types of exponential decay problems, such as you know a, a truck depreciating after you buy it, um, which kind of has that same model to it, or you know the the possibilities are endless. But um, hopefully this helps you understand at least um, radioactive decay problems and how you specifically deal with this half-life concept.